And we are starting. All right, we're live. Good morning, everyone. Greetings from Toronto, Canada. Welcome to our live session today. My name is uh, Nicholas Reyes, Project Manager for Special Programs. And great to have you for our meet and greet session. So great to meet you virtually. And please take note that all our online support groups, just a quick reminder, our official WhatsApp groups are still open until in the next few weeks. So if you guys have any questions, please feel free to message us there with anything. And all our live sessions are recorded and will be posted in Moodle for those who can't attend. So again, so for today, oh, we have our meet and greet. We have uh, many speakers that you guys will meet. You get to see the face and the match the name that I'm sure you guys are emailing all the time. So we have for today, we have Shauna, our academic uh, manager. Michael Varaka is our director. You'll be meeting him and seeing him uh, later on in the presentations. Uh, we also have Tamara and Courtney from Student Services. And we also have from co-op, uh, Peter Tellis Langdon. Meg Desmond, also from the academic uh, department, uh, will be talking about Canadian culture. And Mark Gonzalez, uh, the academic integrity. And finally, also we have our student success with Prince Sharma. So next slide. This is the week uh, of the live sessions. So for today from nine, all the way to 1030 we have our meet and greet right after you guys will be meeting your program coordinators so depending on what program you're in all the links uh, are posted in our main website at lamptoncollege.ca slash toronto so please make sure to go to the right link for your program right after this meet and greet and also for in the next few days, we have uh, our workshops with the different departments talking about specifically about the, the department. So please make sure to attend this one. Lots of great information. And also this sessions are in MS Teams. OK, so all the workshop sessions will are MS Teams, except the one you have for today at 1030. OK. And also, um, the next slide we have is. Sorry, the next slide is Moodle, which is Shauna's, but it's okay. just for some reason when I move the slide, it's all messed up. No problem. But again, uh, just to me uh, mention again, please make sure to attend the next live sessions this week. Lots of great information by the different departments. Please don't miss them and please make sure to go to the right link. So next up, we have Shauna Sheldon to talk about Moodle to jumpstart our presentations today. Shauna. Awesome, good morning. Uh, thanks for that, Nicholas. And um, thanks, Meg, for fixing the slides so quickly. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> um, my name is Shauna Sheldon and I head up uh, the Quality Assurance Team at Lambton College in Toronto. Um, I'm just going to give you a quick overview of uh, Moodle, as Nicholas mentioned. New Moodle is um, the college's learning management system. So this is kind of the hub for you to get access to all kinds of things. Um, the link is uh, there at the bottom of this slide. Um, take a picture or write it down or you know watch the recording afterwards. This is a very important link for you. Um, if you are looking for any resources, if you are looking for uh, trying to find out how to get in touch with someone, um, if you're trying to find out what events are coming up, um, you can go to Moodle and get access to all of this information. But most importantly, Moodle is where you get access to all of your courses and all of your course materials. So let's uh, take a quick look. Um, so again, the link, very important. It's at the top of this slide. Um, and what you'll do is when you get um, go to the website, you will be entering your My Lambton credentials to get into Moodle. Um, so mine are there and then hit login. And then uh, this is the home page. So um, the, there's a number of things that you can see on this screen right now. So down the left column, You'll see all of your course material, all of your courses listed. So that'll give you quick access to the courses that you have um, that are active at the time. Um, 
the at the very top of the screen you can see a number it's very small but you can see a number of different links at the top of the screen those are the departments um, and you can that's where you'll get access to a number of resources down the right hand side is the navigation bar so you'll see um, in that um, there's some quick links in that navigation bar and these are the links that you will gain access to most we're going to dig into a couple of these um, in just a second, um, but um, in the very middle of the screen is where you'll see all the events. So whenever we have clubs starting up, whenever we have important dates coming up, you'll see all of the information in that uh, site news and you can see the most recent one there is about our vaccination and um, and mask mandate. So uh, those are the types of announcements that we put in the um, news events that are in the middle of uh, your Moodle homepage. And the slide's not working very well either. <laughs> OK, so um, the let's just go back to the top slide, Meg. Yeah, so um, again, I'm just going to go very quickly through each of the sections. Uh, one, sorry, one more down, two more down, sorry. Yeah, OK, so across the top of the Moodle homepage, there are a number of links there. So if you click on any of those links, You'll get access to key personnel in the department. You'll get access to specific policy documents, um, documents that uh, maybe student services might uh, share with you. Um, if you hit the, the second one over is co-op and career. So if you were to hit the co-op and career link, you would see who your co-op and career advisor is uh, for your program. Um, the the fourth one over is the tutoring center so if you're looking for support um, academic support you can reach out to the tutoring center this way these are very handy links to get access to that kind of information uh, resources information about the key uh, personnel in those departments um, and then i'll just very quickly go over the the column on the right hand side um, so that column on the right hand side is and i just have to move something from my screen just a minute I'm sorry. So the column down the side where it says search news, contact us. Uh, we now have, this is an old screenshot. We now have a job board up here for anyone who's looking for on-campus uh, part-time employment. Um, but you can see down that right column, there's some quick links. So you can get access to, um, there's a contact list there. You can get access to Web Advisor where you'll get your, um, your grades. Um, the My Career, uh, sorry, My Lampton, um, and then um, My Career Center as well, uh, for, particularly for those of you who are in a co-op program. I mentioned the job board, um, so that's there for on campus or in and around campus, uh, short term, part time employment. And then the database is at the bottom. There's a few more. This is just a screenshot, but um, these are the quick links that will give you access to uh, some of those other sites so that you will jump um, to those sites from Moodle. And at the very top is search news. So maybe you saw a post about um, a, an event that's coming up, maybe um, a job fair that's coming up at the college. Um, and then now it's not you know, at the top of the screen. You can always hit search news, put in job fair and um, find the information about that job fair. So lots of great information here. But again, most importantly, this is where you're going to get access to all of your courses. Um, and that's it for me. And sorry about the technology issue, but um, hopefully uh, you uh, you have a good sense of um, what you what, what you'll get from um, going to that little page. By the way, I should also mention that on the um, uh, Lambton College in uh, LamptonCollege.ca forward slash Toronto, uh, the Moodle link is also there. So we have put this link everywhere so that uh, there's some um, so that you always have access to to that um, Moodle page. That's it. Thank you, Shauna. Uh, and I'm going to pass things over to Courtney Minos, our student services representative, to present the student services portion. Thank you, Meg. Good morning, everybody. Um, my name is Courtney Minos. I am one of five student service advisors here to assist you at Lambton College in Toronto. And as the screen says here, we're here to help um, assist you, support you, provide you with tips and guidance throughout your academic career, and of course, advice to assist you along the way. 
So Student Services is the College Information Hub. Um, we are kind of your first point of contact for all queries. Um, specifically, we connect with students to the uh, to the student services they need to achieve academic success through information, advisement, counseling, and referral as well. So you can contact student services via ticketing system. So what this looks like is you would email student services at sestarcollege.com and this would um, come on our end as an email. We advise you only send one email at a time um, because we have five advisors and if you send multiple emails, we may be all looking at the same case and it may cause confusion on your end. Um, it's easier to just send one email and we can tackle your query as soon as we get it. Um, to go in more depth in terms of student services, we want you to save the date and time, Wednesday, May 4th at 9 a.m. We're going to have a session with my other colleague, Tamara Eswick. She'll be there as well to discuss more of what student services can provide for you during your academic career. Um, I'm also going to be presenting on sexual violence. This is a very important topic. Um, this will also be presented on Wednesday as well. My name is Courtney Minos again, and I am the chair of the Sexual Violence Committee. So our committee members, there's four of us. It's myself, Courtney Minos, Tamara Eswick, my colleague, Victoria Hartsis, and Peter Tellis Langdon, as well, my other colleagues. And we are here to support you. We focus solely on promoting healthy and safe relationships for both men and women, assuring that our students never feel alone, of course, and it's always OK to ask for help. We really, really push for that. We we know that sexual violence and sexual assault and the language surrounding this can be a very intense and taboo topic, um, but we are here to support you. We're well equipped to as well. We definitely can uh, touch base on consent Advocacy and awareness is our main priority as well. And then abuse can be present whether you are in a relationship with someone or not. We really, really want to advise um, to connect with us, whether you're experiencing this um, for yourself or you want to support a friend or family member who has been um, coming to you for advice and has um, been looking for a way out. We can assist you with all of this information. So once again, for sexual violence, save the date Wednesday, May 4th, 9 a.m. We'll be presenting alongside student services. OK, as well as mental health. So I am also the chair of the mental health committee. This presentation will also be presented on Wednesday in a more in-depth um, presentation. So I'd advise if you're interested to please attend. The committee members for the mental health committee are myself, Courtney Minos, uh, Prince Sharma, Jim Doss, and Courtney Gibson. Same with sexual violence. We are here to support you through mental health. We know that this is a huge, huge, huge factor that does impact all areas of our life. Um, we promote mental health for all students and staff. We host talking circles once a month for student support, which is an amazing um, event that we hold. It's kind of um, a big group of students that come together just to talk about the monthly topic or anything that they're feeling. We we really push that mental health is both both positive and negative, so we, we touch on all areas of the spectrum there. We also provide academic and personal counseling on our team. Our team consists of student service advisors and tutoring center um, advisors, so we are here to support you with your academic and personal needs should you, that arise for mental health. We also have Wellness Wednesdays. Um, so on Wednesdays, we advise you review your Moodle. As Shauna was showing you prior, your, your Moodle is a great place to have resources available to you. So we post all of our mental health resources um, specifically on Wednesdays, but you can also find us on Moodle under the Student Services tab. Um, for a more in-depth conversation regarding mental health, we really advise you show up on Wednesday, May 4th, 9 a.m. as well to cover both student services, sexual violence, and mental health. And okay. I will go on to immigration. Thank you. Thank you so much, Courtney. 
So my name is Meg Desmond. I'm the Academic Quality Coordinator, uh, but I will be covering off the immigration portion today just to give you guys a little bit of information. Uh, the immigration advisor, her name is Melissa Harris. Uh, the email contact for her is immigration at sestarcollege.com. If you want to write that down for your records, especially if you're thinking you're coming into Canada soon or you just got here and you have questions, that's always a great contact to reach out to. So Melissa is the director on the board of Immigration Consultants of Canada Regulatory Council or ICCRC in Ontario. So Melissa has years of experience in immigration and legal services. She's dedicated to helping our students by answering questions on all things immigration. So Melissa is very experienced in this field. Uh, she's dealt with a lot of students in a lot of different groups. So if you do have questions about any of the following topics that we're gonna cover on Thursday, she is your first point of contact. She's here to help you. So in the session, we will cover being diligent and understanding your immigration status. So what does this mean? Uh, there's probably a lot of legal jargon or terms that are being thrown around and you might be feeling like you're in over your head or not knowing what any of this means. So she's a great person to help sift through all those weird terms and get down to the nitty gritty of what this actually means for you in your stay in Canada. She'll also go over passport and expiry dates, so super important to make sure that all your documents are in line, you have all your ducks in a row. She'll go over study permits and extensions co-op permits, right? I think most of you should have a co-op in your program. So that's something that's super important to know for future. Uh, your work permits as well. So if you're wanting to do any sort of part-time work while you're here, she'll cover off that. Uh, and then entry visa. So multiple entry, one-time entry. What are these different types of visas? Uh, what does each category mean? And what does this mean for you, depending on what you have? Melissa will also be covering when can I work and how many hours? So uh, this is again super important if you're thinking about doing any sort of part-time work while you're here. You want to know what the requirements are and make sure that you're following the guidelines so that um, your stay in Canada is uh, everything up to legal standard and you're setting yourself up for your PR. Uh, you also want to stay in compliance with the IRCC. Again, super important just to follow all those rules. She'll talk about restoration of status within 90 days. And uh, this is an important topic, so maybe just make a little mental note on Thursday to pay extra attention when Melissa covers restoration of status. She's also going to cover replacements of lost or stolen documents. Um, can be really scary if you lose something or something stolen, maybe during travel. So she'll cover what to do in that case. And hopefully if this is something that has happened to you, just help to set your mind a little bit more at ease. She'll also talk about inviting family members. So. A lot of you might have a family that wants to visit, maybe parents, maybe siblings, maybe even children, spouses. So she's going to talk about um, how that process works, what the tourist visit visa is, how you can have your family come visit you and make sure again that you're still following those guidelines. She'll also talk about postgraduate work permits. So uh, even though you guys are just starting your studies here, you wanna be thinking about the long game and you wanna be thinking, okay, after I graduate, what's a work permit gonna look like? Um, how can that lead to me potentially having a future in Canada if that's what you decide that you want? So she's gonna go over the steps of that and what that's gonna look like for you. And then finally, many of you coming here might have the end goal of eventually getting your permanent residency in Canada. So Melissa is going to give you some great information on how to go about that, how to set yourself up for success, what the process looks like, uh, and basically if that's your goal, how you can achieve permanent residence during your time here. So this session is going to be on Thursday, May 5th at 9 a.m. Please save the date. Melissa will be there and she will go into so much more depth than I'm able to on all of those topics. Uh, it's going to be a super important one for many of you. I bet a lot of you have immigration questions. So please come on Thursday and I look forward to seeing you there. I'm going to pass things over next to my colleague Peter to cover co-op. Peter, I think you're on mute. Uh, okay, am I live now? I'm good, okay. 
Good morning, everybody. Uh, bonjour, buenos dias. Good morning, buongiorno, bon dia. So, behekar, uh, salam alaikum, namaste, sachriyakal, tanakam, uh, eidahana, maganda umaga, salam alaikum, dobro utra, uh, anoyun haseo, Kalasori Seit Se Ulus. Hopefully, I have greeted you all in your own language. If I missed anyone, please feel free to email me and I'll add you to my list of good mornings. Uh, I am Peter Tellis Lehman. I'm a co op advisor uh, here at Lambton College. Next slide. Okay, here are the co-op advisors for the programs. We have Brian Messias, who's the co-op manager, uh, and he covers CCBT and SCMT. We have Diana McLennan, uh, who covers BMAT, CPCT, and CPMT. We have Pamela Chan, who's covering MADT, MMDT, MMPT, PMIT and PMLT. Uh, Andrea Spence is covering the uh, AIMT, OHST, and QEMT programs. And I am the co op advisor for BMHT, CSAT, and FPWT. Uh, all our names are here on the slide. Our emails are there. So please feel free to email us with any questions regarding co op employment resumes, cover letters, job search, interview skills, all the things that are scary. Um, we do have uh, video chat times and uh, you can go to the uh, help room. It's uh, an Adobe uh, Connect help room. And here are the times that were available and who's going to be covering the room when. Uh, make sure you state your name, student number, and program anytime you're trying to contact us. That's the information we need to find you in the system. Career services are offered to everyone. We are here to help. So we do do one-on-one -on -one appointments. They're done virtually now. Um, we do resume critiquing. Resumes have changed a lot in the last 10 years. Um, welcome to 2022. Your resume is going to be read by a machine. If it's not designed to get past the machine, the person doesn't look at it. So feel free to contact us and we can help you make an applicant tracking system friendly resume. Cover letters have also changed a, a lot in the last few years. Certainly in the last three years, there's been a lot of changes. Contact us, we can help you write a cover letter that's going to inspire an employer to want to meet you. Uh, we do job search assistance. Uh, we, we can talk to you about your online presence, which is a big thing these days. We can prepare you for interviews. Yes, they're scary, but they don't need to be talk to us, we can help you with interview skills, and we do one-on-one -on -one mock interviews with you as well if, if needed. Okay, our role, well, we provide career and employment development services and resources for co-op students and everybody else as well. Uh, we help with resumes, cover letters, job search documents, um, assistance with interviews, because we know how, how stressful that can be. Um, we assess the suitability of work term employment opportunities, and we monitor the co-op uh, term. Um, <clears throat> we're always developing and tweaking the CPP 1001 co-op preparation course. It is mandatory for all co-op students to take that and pass it. Uh, we do conduct classroom visits in term one and term three, uh, all about co-op. So if you have any questions, don't hesitate to contact us. Um, we help with all of your marketing materials and job search, etc. 
And we do one on one appointments, which can be booked through the My Career system. So, Thursday, on May 5th at 9 a.m., there's a session which is all about co op. Um, I'll be explaining in a lot more detail what you need, what you need to know, how to prepare, and uh, you know, a bit about how to find a co op and, and get a great start to a great career. So, hopefully, I'll see you there. Excellent. Thank you so much, Peter. Hope to see you guys at that co-op session on Thursday. Uh, and I'm going to be back presenting on Canadian culture. So again, my name is Meg Desmond. I'm the Academic Quality Coordinator here at the college, and I'm going to be telling you a little bit about Canadian culture. Um, for many of you, this is probably your first time in Canada, or it might be your first time in Canada, and you're going to notice some things are different from your home country, and some of these are going to seem kind of weird to you. So to best prepare you for that, I'll just give a little bit of an overview of Canadian culture. So the Canadian culture session is going to cover what is Canadian culture. So the, some key touch points as I've seen it, I've lived here my whole life. I was born here, grew up here. So I have some sense at least <laughs> of my own culture. Um, also Canadian customs and etiquette. So how do people behave? What are the expectations when you're in social settings, when you're in the classroom, when you're on public transit? Uh, all these different things are part of the customs and etiquette that you should expect when you're here. We're also gonna go into communication, body language, and personal space. Again, these can kind of vary for different cultures and different peoples. Um, personal space, especially I think since COVID-19 has changed a little bit in terms of what people are comfortable with and what the expectations are. So we're gonna go over that so that you're best equipped for coming here into the country. And finally, we're gonna talk about dealing with culture shock. Um, culture shock is completely normal. It's an experience that you can have when you enter a new culture or a new country and you have to deal with a lot of the changes there. And a lot of that is maybe homesickness, missing your family, but also missing your home, missing the culture of your home and dealing with just being suddenly immersed in a new culture. Um, and I know Courtney went over earlier the mental health resources that we have at the college. Um, those are really great. You should reach out to your advisors if you do find that you're dealing with culture shock and having a hard time adjusting because we do have supports at the college here to help you. But for most people, um, culture shock is something that you probably will experience to varying degrees. And the good news is that uh, the last stage of culture shock is getting used to it and accepting the new culture. So <laughs> there is a bright horizon and there are a lot of great things here in Canada that we really think that you're going to enjoy while you're studying here at the college. So please save the date for Thursday, May 5th, session starting at 9 a.m. I'll be covering more about Canadian culture, going into a bit more in depth about some of the Canadian uh, customs, behaviors, etiquette, as well as dealing with culture shock. I hope to see you there. I'm gonna pass things next to Mark Gonzalez to talk about academic integrity. Thank you so much for that, Meg. I hope my audio is okay and Canada sounds like a really great place. I, I would love to be there one day. <laughs> so, uh, thanks everyone for coming in and all the presenters so far. Uh, hi everyone, my name is Mark Gonzalez, as you have heard, uh, and I'm the Academic Integrity Officer of the College. So uh, really nice to meet you all for the very first time and I hope that I see more of you down the road. But uh, today we're chatting about, uh, I guess, the coolest parts of school, um, policies and, you know, <laughs> trying to submit evaluations and assessments and stuff. And if you're wondering what academic integrity is, it's really concerned with uh, making sure that the stuff that we evaluate you on is very representative of what you've learned in your courses. So in this case, we are very much concerned about uh, four big things, honesty, fairness, accountability, and trust. And if you follow those things as you try to submit anything for grading or just even being in a classroom, um, I think you're hitting all the right marks and and we're very we're going to be uh, you know, uh, meshing very well together. So uh, on Friday, we are going to be doing a few different things and I'm going to be there doing lots of stuff on Friday. And like I say all the time, you will probably get sick of seeing my face because I'm going to be on camera for so long. Uh, we're going to be covering academic honesty. What does that even mean? You know, what do we expect of that? And, you know, we have expectations for sure, but I'm sure you have expectations of us as well. So we're going to just kind of discuss what that relationship is going to be. Um, we're going to be going through evaluations, what you should do and what you shouldn't do. Um, 
plagiarism, uh, maybe some of you have heard that word. If you haven't heard that word, I'd be shocked. But if you haven't, that's OK, because, you know, that's what we're here for on Friday. Uh, we're going to be going over um, APA, which is my favorite topic, and I think it will be yours uh, in <laughs> due time. And, uh, you know, group work is going to be very popular in many of your courses. So we just want to know we want to let you know how that's going to work, um, what group work entails and what to do when your friend says, hey, you want to cheat with me or something? And, you know, or just want some help or something like what? How do you react in those situations? And uh, any other relevant resources we feel you might need, we'll pass those along to you on Friday as well. And on top of all of that stuff, uh, we're also going to be handling an APA workshop as well. So I'm going to be chatting about uh, academic integrity first. And then if you are very much willing to stick around for another hour, uh, we're going to chat about APA and APA. If you don't know what that is, it's like a documentation guideline. How do you submit written work? How do you submit presentations like PowerPoint slides according to the proper format and representing your work as honest work? So um, yeah, well, with that being said, you know, I, I would love to have you uh, with us on Friday. Uh, you know, all the cool kids will be there and <laughs> I, I hope you will be too. And so you'll see me at the first session with everyone else presenting. And I'll also have a separate section uh, at 11 o'clock, like I said, to cover specifically APA. OK, so thanks everyone for listening. I'll pass it over to I think Shauna, you're next, right? Yes, uh, thanks for that, Mark. Um, the one thing that I also wanted to mention was that on Friday we're doing a game. I don't know if Nicholas mentioned that at the um, at the start of the session today. We are going to um, we're going to have a game at the end of the week with prizes. So just make sure that you pay attention to all of the sessions this week because that'll give you the best chance at a prize at the end of the week. Um, so I'm going to tell you a tiny bit about uh, travel vaccination and campus access. This was a much bigger deal, um, you know, in previous terms when there were a lot of restrictions in place. Uh, but we will spend a little bit of time on um, this topic on Friday. Um, and next slide. Um, so just some important dates for you to keep in mind. So um, uh, everyone should be vaccinated um, before you come to Canada because this was a requirement as of January 15th of this year. It remains a requirement um, for you to travel to Canada. So um, just make sure that uh, you have that vaccination. There will be some information on Friday about the specific vaccinations that are accepted by uh, the, the federal government uh, here in Canada. But um, but just, um, you know, book that vaccination um, uh, appointment um, as soon as you possibly can. Um, the second date there is August 31st. First, so IRCC did announce back um, just before the end of 2021 that the time that you spend in your home country up until August 31st will count towards your postgraduate work permit. However, um, you do need to plan to be for here for fall 2022, um, not just for the PG, PGWP, but because um, at this time we fully expect classes to be on campus. In fact, the, the campus is currently bustling uh, with lots of activity right now. Many of uh, the, our speakers today are joining us from campus. So um, it is important for you to start thinking about your travel plans. If you haven't already traveled to Canada, it's important for you to at least start thinking about that um, and travel when you can. Uh, lastly, May 9th is the start of the semester, but um, everyone in the session today is term one and your courses will be offered remotely. So you do not need to travel immediately for classes on the 9th, um, but you do need to um, start thinking about that travel. Um, and uh, you will receive the link to your room. So all of your classes are online, um, but you will receive the link to your classrooms through Moodle once again, um, which I showed at the outset. Um, so the in summary, two things, get vaccinated. Get vaccinated now, um, otherwise you will not be able to travel here. Uh, there are some very specific requirements around that vaccination, which we will spend some time on on Friday. Um, and then also travel when you can. The one thing that we learned this past year was the travel restrictions are kind of unpredictable. We don't know what's going to happen next. We hope that we are in the home stretch now, getting out of this pandemic, but um, we want to make sure that you are here, especially those of you who have uh, labs, uh, because those labs definitely are on campus. But um, but as of uh, now, IRCC requires that you're here as of August 31st. Um, and we require that you're here for September classes because those classes will be on campus. So travel when you can. 
Next slide. So my session will be very quick on Friday, uh, May 6th. Um, I will be joining um, uh, Mark and Meg and uh, Jim to actually, uh, who we won't be meeting today, but he will be um, at that session and Prince. Um, and we will um, go, I'll go over the travel vaccinations and campus access at that time. Uh, and I hope uh, to see you all there. That's it. Excellent. Thanks so much, Shauna. I'm going to pass things next to Prince Sharma to talk about student support programs. Thanks, Meg. Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining us today. I'm Prince Sharma, an operations coordinator of two uh, operations coordinator of learning centers. So we have two student support programs. First, online tutoring services, and second, writing language center. So tutoring tutoring center basically focuses on the academic academic. Um, academic support, academic learning, but the and the WLC lean towards writing advanced reflective journals, your assignments and improving communication skills. You know, most of the students you're going to study under the new academic culture and perhaps it will be a challenge to adapt the change. But guess what? To make it smooth, we have these learning centers. It's going to be the extra support to your studies. Meet our team, Prince Sharma, myself and Gagan Deepkar. She's working as a student uh, success counselor who will be doing the early intervention on the students. Um, you know, low performance, low uh, class attendance. So we'll be meeting with you one on one. We'll be having a virtual or in person meetings with you. And um, next slide, please. And this is our information. If you want to reach out to us, you can email us. Um, you can contact us via video chats. We're always uh, our e video chat is on Wednesday from 9 to 11. You can always email um, the next slide, please. Here's our information. You want to email us tutoring center at sestercollege.com and we care at sestercollege.com. Further details, how to actually avail these services. We'll be doing on Friday, so can't wait to go further in the details. Share the details, so save the date and time Friday, May 6th at 9 a.m. Thank you. Thank you, Prince. Uh, and at this point, I'd like to pass things over to our director, Michael Varakis, to cover the director's welcome report. Michael, you might be on mute still. OK, oh, I am fine. It's uh, it's great uh, to uh, to have you here. Welcome to uh, uh, summer 2020, 2022. <laughs> I put too many 20s there, right? Um, uh, we've been, uh, you know, We've got the uh, 2020 on our mind because that's when we went on off on on COVID. So March 16th, 2020, um, we thought we were going to be away, away for a few weeks and it's been, uh, you know, more than two years, but we are coming back on campus. Uh, we are excited to uh, uh, have our staff and students back. I know your first semester is uh, online, but the second semester is right around the corner. It'll start in September for you, and uh, we look forward to seeing you in person. Anyways, my name is Michael Varakis. I'm your director, and uh, I work with this great group of people that you've heard, uh, my colleagues that you've heard uh, all the great things about Lambton College in Toronto. This is a public-private partnership between Lambton College in Sarnia and uh, Sestar College in Toronto. So all our students are 100% international. We've been doing this since summer of 2011. And uh, since that time, we've had over 16,000 uh, graduates. We have over 20 programs in um, business, health and technology. And, uh, you know, how do we go from 30 students in one program to over 6,000 students in 20 different programs? Well, we do this by listening to our stakeholders. Our five major stakeholders are students, employers, instructors, staff, and administrators. So we believe in continuous improvement. Students are the largest uh, group um, in, of our, in, in our stakeholder group. And we listen to our students when, through our uh, International Student Success Survey that we do every semester. So uh, we go to classrooms, we find out what students are thinking about, and we implement those uh, changes. So uh, that's uh, one of the uh, ways that we do it. Also, we have student perception of learning that's conducted at the end of each course. And also our manager of academics, Sandy Benson, does the student forum 
annually with students from all semesters of the program. So that's how we listen to students. We really, really love to hear your opinion so we can make the needed changes here um, at the college. Our employers are, uh, we work with over 5,000 employers, 3,000 are paid, and uh, we listen to our employers through the program advisory committees. So uh, the employers love our students, love our graduates, and um, I invite you all to uh, also uh, join LinkedIn and you can see uh, the employers that we deal with. Um, if you know, you're a student at Lambton College in Toronto, you send me an invite on LinkedIn and I see you're a student, I'll accept you. And when you go on my site, you're going to see over uh, 9,500 students, staff, graduates, employers, educators, instructors, and uh, you can, you know, start networking right there yourself and finding out more about Canada, Toronto, the college, all those things. So I strongly, strongly suggest that. Our employers represent uh, their views on um, uh, through program advisory committees and each program here at the college is a program advisory committee. We meet twice per year online and once per year on per in person uh, where we conduct a, a campus tour and um, the uh, program advisory committee is chaired by an external member. All external members are voting. Internal members like myself and staff and faculty and coordinators uh, and students are non-voting members on the PAC. So I'm really um, excited about things that uh, they have to tell us and how we can make our program better. Our instructors, near and dear to our heart, uh, subject matter experts, uh, professionals, they're, they're the individuals that you probably spend the most time with here. And um, we wanna make sure that they can impart that uh, as, uh, expertise that they have. And we ask that all our instructors who have been here for at least two years, Take the teacher training of adult program at Seneca College. It's an online program, five courses, and we want to make sure that we have not only the smartest instructors, but they can really impart that knowledge to our students. Our staff and administrators are awesome. I work with an awesome group of people that are, um, you know, hardworking, dedicated, willing to do whatever it takes to assist you and uh, understand why international students are here. And they're here for three major reasons. Number one, students are here to get a two-year diploma and which will lead them to a three-year uh, postgraduate work permit. Number two, students are here to get a job related to the program of study. And number three, students are here to get their permanent residency. We understand that, we know that, we know the drill, we've been there, uh, uh, we've seen it, and we've seen a lot of success stories. Uh, each and every day with our students. So um, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's a great way to uh, connect. And uh, it's great when you work with a team of people that really understand what your needs are. And we're here to do that. So our ultimate goal is uh, to make sure you're a permanent resident and you stay in this beautiful country we call Canada and you're part of our uh, uh, culture and you're part of uh, this one of the top countries in the world. Now, we have uh, 21 different programs. The programs in black are programs that have labs. So all the other programs uh, are theory-based. Um, all programs start with uh, the first semester online and they start with labs uh, in person. So we've been doing labs in person since July 8th of 2020. So if you're starting off online, and you have a lab, we will accommodate you when you get into Canada because to come to Canada, uh, you need to have a study permit. So, uh, and uh, that's, that's required. Uh, during this pandemic, uh, we really saw, the government really showed us the value of international students because they said, you know what? You can start online, you can start in your country and the time that you put towards your studies would be coming towards your postgraduate work permit. This was never done before. Pre-pandemic, you had to be in Canada, you needed to have a study permit and you needed to study in person. So there are some advances that have been made uh, because of this uh, pandemic. And uh, as I always like to say, in chaos, there's opportunity. And the opportunity here was to uh, continue the dreams of our students who wanted to study in Canada and we didn't let go on that. 
and uh, we've uh, we've still um, continued our uh, commitment to our students and to make sure of, you know of their lives in Canada. Next slide, please. Now, what are we doing for students? A couple things I want to suggest to all of you. Um, if you want to create, you don't have a second chance to create a first impression. So, you know, when you send out your resume, you send out your uh, you send out your uh, cover letter and it's full of spelling mistakes and grammatical errors. You know, the employer is just looking to whittle down that list. And when 500 people apply for a job and only one person gets it, they look at deficiencies of, in the resumes, the cover letters, and they throw them out and they don't give you a chance. Don't be in that boat. Get Grammarly Premium, which we have for all our students. It's an expensive program. If you get it on your own, Grammarly Premium will cost you close to $200 US. You have access to it till you graduate. So you start now in summer of 2022, you're gonna have access to Grammarly Premium till the end of December, 2023. I use it every day, I love it. It interfaces with Word and Outlook and I strongly suggest you download the links to to uh, to get it and LinkedIn learning. We're one of the top LinkedIn learning institutions in North America. Uh, over 15,000 courses are available to our students, staff, instructors, where if you are dealing with a, a concept or or a subject that you're having difficulties uh, working with, uh, you can look it up on LinkedIn learning and there's always um, a course available or a seminar on that subject. I strongly, strongly suggest it. I also suggest the LinkedIn, as I had mentioned to you a few minutes earlier, uh, because what you do is that once you have a LinkedIn profile, you can look at the many competencies you have. Take that course on LinkedIn learning to validate your competencies and you get a badge appended to your LinkedIn profile. So when you're out looking for jobs, when you're out looking uh, at uh, different opportunities, employers look you up right away and they say, oh wow, you know what I mean? This person says this and that, but they've got a badge in that uh, particular area. So it makes it, um, it, it makes your application, your resume, your interest in that company a lot greater. We belong to a lot of industry associations like the Toronto Board of Regional Trade, Brazil Canada Chamber of Commerce, um, Indo-Canada Chamber of Commerce. We work with these organizations to promote networking for our students. We also work with COSTI and SUNO Canada and these are organizations that have been providing advice to immigrants international students for many, many years. Although Pseudo Canada is new that on the scene, we had a, an event with them on Thursday where we had over 150 students on campus uh, to do a peer networking event. So we have lots of different activities that are that are planned and we, uh, you know, we stress that you uh, that you get involved. It's very, very important. We have a Toastmasters chapter. We have a we just started International Women's Club. Um, chapter. Uh, there's lots of ways that you can get involved. Dress for Success and Laptop Programs. My colleagues, um, uh, Tamir Aswick from Student Services, uh, is uh, someone that brought the Dress to Success, Dress for Success to us. She administers that initiative. And Pamela Chan with the Laptop Program. So if you've got a laptop, it's on its last legs, and you know, you know, it doesn't function right. There's some great, great refurbished laptops that we have access to in uh, in a program that we work with and uh, Pamela ends that up. So please uh, reach out to Tamara and Pamela. Now, as I had mentioned to you before, we started small, but now we're big. We've got over three buildings on campus, 60 plus classrooms and labs over 250,000 square feet uh, for our students and staff. So <clears throat> international, uh, bursaries are few and far between, but we do offer them here at Lentham College in Toronto. We have the Sustra Award, which is uh, awarded to the student with the highest GPA after the first two semesters. And uh, uh, my colleague Tamir Estwick heads that up. And, um, you know, we have, um, uh, it's, it's an opportunity that we can really um, um, acknowledge students that are, are doing very, very well. And uh, we just had our Sestra Award Ceremony uh, for the uh, uh, previous semester. We just had it, uh, you know, last week. 
And uh, it was great, great to see the enthusiasm, great to see students and what they're going through. Uh, there's one student I remember that uh, is married, has two children, and uh, you know had the highest GPA you know so far in her in her program. So it's it's tremendous to see the commitment and uh, the sacrifices that people are making and students are making and uh, it, they should be honored and we do that with the SESTRA award. The president's award is for the highest GPA in the program. So every uh, semester we have convocation. It's at the Metro um, Toronto Convention Center. Uh, the final convocation online is in July of this year for the winter uh, 2022 graduates. It'll be supplemented by some in-person activities, but getting back to summer graduates of 2022, uh, they will have their convocation in person at the Metro Convention Center, a beautiful space in downtown Toronto, and we do a, um, we do a, a graduation uh, every semester, and that's where we award the students with the highest GPA in each program. Over 300 talented instructors, staff, and administrators uh, are here. We work together to make sure that we live the dreams uh, for our students. We can't do your homework. You have to write the tests, you have to write the exams, but uh, we're here to assist you and, and we do assist. And uh, a shout out to my colleagues and uh, our staff and instructors who are hardworking and really do a lot to assist our students. We wouldn't be successful without students, but students wouldn't be successful without us. So it's a two way street. So uh, we need students. Absolutely. Students need you know, what we do, what we're capable of doing, and I see it each and every day and it's very, very rewarding. Lots of webinars and seminars from Landlord Tenant Act to uh, how to get your PR to how to fill out your taxes. I mean, April 30th was the big day in Canada where you have to submit your income tax returns. They give us till May 2nd, which was yesterday because uh, April 30th fell on a weekend this year. But um, students uh, usually get money back when they file their income taxes, but uh, they have to be able to know how to do it. And these webinars and seminars really assist. Uh, we do have a break every semester, so we call it 717. We have three semesters per year, fall, winter, and summer. So uh, in summer, uh, you're starting on May 9th, on Monday, but then you're going to get a break at the end of June, which will be a one week break. So it's one week to relax, one week to work full time, one week to do whatever you want. Now back here at the college, we have our professional development weeks, we have our meetings, uh, you know, and uh, the fall meeting is really big where uh, the faculty get together and this is how we hear their input too through the program curriculum committee. So, you know, the coordinator of the program meets with faculty and asks them one basic question. How can we make our program better? So with Shauna Sheldon, the manager of quality has laid out this elaborate system of uh, how to capture those um, uh, nuggets of uh, knowledge of how to make our program better. And it's uh, very, very important. Uh, the programs that are, you're in right now uh, are different than the, uh, than the same program a couple years ago because it's always updated. Uh, so both the program curriculum committee and program advisory committee with employers really helps in making our programs uh, cutting edge. Now, all our students are international. They've traveled from thousands of kilometers away to come to Canada. And you know what? There's issues along the way. I mean, there's anxiety. Sometimes there's uh, uh, depression or financial issues or, or what have you, right? And uh, we understand that. So it's, it's, it's tough coming into a new country and in a new culture. I want you to know you're not alone. You can reach out to me. Uh, you can reach out to student services and in particular to Courtney Minos and uh, Tamara Eswick and uh, uh, you know, my colleagues are very well versed in the resources that are available to students. So 
Um, you're coming here, you've got a spouse back home, you've got to bring to Canada relatives, uh, uh, you're listening to family and they tell you do this and do that, you're listening to people here and you get all, you get a headache, right, with all these, uh, you know, people saying different things and, you know, reach out to us, believe me, we're here to assist you, reach out to our colleagues at Student Services and, and, and we can help you. Now, Students input is very, very important to us. So when you write us an email to student services uh, or to IT support or through letters, it's all part of the ticketing system. And we're pleased to announce that, you know, we get back to our students, 90% uh, of our students in the first 72 hours. Give us three to five days to properly answer your question. Don't open up multiple tickets because it just clogs up the, uh, the, um, uh, the emails and the, the ways we get back to you and we will uh, we will assist you we will uh, respond to you and you can get to us through email through video chat you can call us most of us have our phones linked to our uh, extensions uh, there's no reason why you can't get a hold of us we're here to help so open houses when we get back to campus especially in the fall and I'll tell you what the open house this fall will be focusing on the uh, eight groups that graduated online. So from fall 2019 to winter 2022, uh, all those uh, groups, all those cohorts graduated online. So we could have said, listen, the pandemic, we're not going to have a graduation ceremony. Too bad, so sad. Here's your diploma. But we did something. We did something online. It was an online event guest speakers and lots of great things. And uh, Nicholas Reyes, who takes care of the orientation, did a great job and all, and does not only online, but is, is also responsible for the uh, in-person convocation. So uh, uh, lots of great things that are going to be happening at the at the open house. Student clubs, like I said, I said to you before, I'm really impressed with our Toastmasters chapter. Uh, students that were scared of their shadow, uh, command, uh, you know, large audiences now because they have the confidence and Toastmasters is great. PM Guild, uh, we have uh, lots of different, uh, lots of different uh, groups uh, available here on campus. We have an art club, uh, we have a yoga club. We have so many different things. And as we get back on campus, we're going to look at more of our diversity celebrations. We had the Festival Junina that was put on by the Brazilian students, the Emancipation Day celebration that was put on by Jamaican students, the Diwali Festival with all the colors and food and just so many different events that we do. And uh, I'm so, so happy to be here on campus and to uh, to get these uh, things going. And the key thing, over 5,000 employers. So employers love our students. Uh, employers love our graduates. Now our graduates are in influential hiring positions. They're coming back and hiring, you know, from the college that they started with. So it's a great story and we've got um, lots of lots and lots of positive um, situations and lots of positive examples. Listen, get on LinkedIn and you can see them for yourself. OK, next slide, please. So the student experience here has been great because of our um, uh, commitment from our staff and our instructors and uh, we have an excellent speaker series. Uh, we have a student appreciation week during the break week every semester. So what we're going to do in this uh, student break week of appreciation, bring food trucks on campus, give students some food. We have lots of events. Uh, you know, my um, colleague Michael Liu takes care of the Orient, takes care of the Student Appreciation Week, and he also does the Staff Appreciation Week. We have one of those events every every semester, but he does some uh, really great things in that week. So uh, stay tuned for it. Lots of different volunteering opportunities. Shauna Sheldon has put uh, and worked with Nicholas Reyes to put up a job board of opportunities that are available on campus and the volunteering opportunities. I'm telling you, volunteering is a great way to network. And uh, one of the initiatives I'm looking at, uh, we're looking at right now is um, we're looking to build an Actus chapter for our business students because Lambton College in Sarnia was the worldwide global winner back a few years ago, so they have lots of experience. And we're also looking to build a Habitat for Humanity chapter 
where you know our construction project management students and project management students can volunteer and do the right thing. It's a worldwide organization and that would help in the networking opportunities for them to uh, look at uh, some jo you know job opportunities uh, later on. But there are volunteering opportunities on campus. Uh, there are on campus jobs, so the job board has been developed and uh, it looks uh, it looks great. The campus we took advantage of the um, pandemic to say hey listen there's not a lot of people on campus let's you know refresh our place so we fixed up our gym we added a new cafeteria we had an old loading dock area and we converted it into more classrooms and lab space and in that and uh, uh, student uh, learning spots where students can get together and work on their projects and do different things and uh, I'm really excited about the things that we've done here. So we've really uh, fixed up our facility and, and made it a lot better. Um, we have an immigration professional that's with us, uh, Melissa Harris, and uh, all students are here on some sort of immigration uh, status. You're either on a study permit or if you're studying from home, you're on an approval in principle, I mean outside of the country. Um, if you uh, are on co-op, you've got a co-op work permit. If you graduate, you get a, a postgraduate work permit. Uh, so like in those four different scenarios, there are certain rights and responsibilities that students have. There's no one that can offer immigration advice by law unless you are an immigration counselor, a lawyer, or a RECIA. And RECIAs are individuals that work at um, post-secondary institutions. Uh, you know, Victoria and Tamara are both uh, qualified RECIAs. They work with us and we're getting more and more of our staff to uh, uh, take up the program. It's a rigorous program. It takes about a year to complete, but uh, it's complicated. And that's why the government wants to have people that are properly trained to offer that advice. So my colleague, uh, uh, Prince Sharma, who you heard earlier, and uh, Gagan Deepkor work in the tutoring center. Do a great job of the week care for the first semester students. So we have WhatsApp, we have week care, we have different ways that we can connect together with you. And uh, I'm really proud of the work that they're doing and uh, the questions that uh, our students are asking and we're able to answer. Job career and um, career and job fairs. As I had mentioned to you bef uh, before, uh, we work with over 5,000 employers. Um, Edward Blackburn, his team, Edward is our director of uh, corporate relations. And uh, Brian Messias, who's our manager of co op and career, worked very, very hard to work with the students to make sure that the opportunities are presented to them. So the job and career fairs were online during this pandemic. And then when we get back in person, they'll be on site. And this is where our employers have a chance to see our students. So it's like a matchmaking service and we do that. We're also planning some uh, you know, uh, interviewing events and uh, more peer network events as we had uh, last Thursday here on uh, campus. So the student experience here is great and uh, the greatest thing that we can offer you is uh, our dedicated and helpful staff. Sometimes, you know, you hear an answer you don't like to hear and it's not the staff's fault, it's the way it is. Uh, this is the way, you know, and you know, you can only work 20 hours uh, when you're in school. Uh, that's an immigration. Uh, that's an immigration law. Uh, you can work full time uh, when you're on academic break or, uh, you know, that one week break during semesters. That's an uh, immigration rule. You can only work part time between semesters, between your first and second semester, let's say, those you know weeks that are between semesters. That's an immigration law. So it's not you know the staff's fault. We're just passing on the uh, you know the the rules that are there. Uh, so please be collegial. Please be kind. They'll be kind to you and we can work together. OK, so we work with a lot of different uh, situations and some extraordinary situations that we faced. We're always here to help our students. So here's a list of all the different associations from the Indo-Canada Chamber of Commerce uh, to the North York Community House, which uh, represents is represented by Costi, uh, providing advice to new Canadians for the past 50 years. 
Um, and then some of the festivals that we've had here and some of the different celebrations you can see there on the left hand side. I can't wait till uh, you know we, we have our student events. We have everything from uh, Niagara fall trips in the summer to uh, snowboarding events in the in the winter. So some some great events that we have uh, planned for our students and our student council is uh, awesome. Um, Tamara Eswick Prince are the uh, Prince Sharma are the liaisons between the um, uh, administration and the student council. We have over 30 dedicated members. I mean, these guys are and gals are, are awesome. The ideas they come up with, the different um, um, initiatives, uh, they're the voice of the students. So we really love working with them. I, you know, please reach out to the student council on uh, Instagram, Facebook, or LinkedIn, and you can see what they're all about. Okay, so a, a great group. And, um, you know, some pictures here of what our buildings look like. Um, uh, we have three buildings, uh, 265, 271, and 259 Yorkland. And uh, please stop by and uh, you know see what we have to offer uh, to you. And if you want to see more pictures of our staff, students, facilities, you can download this link and you can look at it and you can see all the um, you know not only happy faces but great facilities and and uh, you know behind each smile is a success story and uh, there's so many you know we could be here for for days just talking about all the um, successes that our students have had and our graduates are in and the positions that they're in so you made a great choice to come to Lambton College in Toronto we're here to help you and uh, our alumni association right now is not only going to uh, be available when you graduate, they're going to be available earlier. So uh, our colleague Jim McDaws works with the uh, Lambton Alumni Association to make sure those opportunities are better presented earlier to students. OK, and thank you very much. Thank you for being our student. Thank you for choosing Lambton College in Toronto. Thanks to our staff and instructors and all the hardworking people here who, who make it happen for everyone every single day. Thank you very much. All right. All right. Uh, uh, thank you, thank uh, you Michael. Uh, Michael. And thank and you to thank our, you our spe speakers and staff. Just a quick wrap up before we finish our workshop today. Um, just a reminder that after this workshop, you have another workshop with your program coordinator. So please make sure to attend this and it's specifically by program. So they're, they're, the links are posted in the main website at lamptoncollege.ca. Please make sure to find the link and click it. And at 1030, um, your program coordinators will be meeting you. And again, just some reminders that all these live sessions this week are recorded. So if, for those who can't attend or your friend was not able to go in the link, we will be posting the links in Moodle for you guys to check out. Second, our WhatsApp groups are still live and active in the next coming weeks. If you guys have any questions or concerns, we have a great team that will help you uh, answer your questions or inquiries. And then also um, for the next uh, few days, we have our staff will be talking about more specific their departments from um, Wednesday student services we also have guard me uh, the health insurance on Thursday. We have our housing and accommodations. We invited some really good speakers to talk about this one. Some tips also about immigration co-op and Canadian culture. And our last day is on Friday. Uh, we invited uh, another speaker uh, keeping students safe. So like talking about scams, you know, a lot of this online scams you get to have some really good tips especially once you guys arrive in canada academic integrity student success travel to canada and of course we have some games uh, and prices that will be uh, uh, provided in the last day so if you guys are free please make sure to not miss all these great activities in the next few days Please make sure to also connect to MS Teams. So all the workshops are MS Teams, except for the one we have at 10.30 today, Adobe Connect. So Adobe Connect is another platform that you will be using when you start attending your classes virtually. 
So it's a good practice to also click the link and to see how the online platform is. And again, uh, I just would like to say thank you for attending today and we wish you good luck and we hope to meet you guys in person and all the best and thank you so much. And don't miss to attend your uh, program quarter meeting just right after this. Thank you and have a great day. Thank you. Bye bye. Thanks everyone.